Today I'm going to show you how to make a Line Rider replica, which is an old Flash game. It's pretty popular. So right now we have this character that I made in Photoshop that mimics the old Line Rider and it's available for download in the description for free on my Patreon page. And so some cool features are that we're able to pan around the screen. We're also able to zoom in if we want. And you can adjust the speed of the zoom, of course. And then we can draw lines. And we can also erase the lines that we draw. So you can see that now we can look around but when we press space, it will go to the player and it will start the game. And you can draw while you are playing the game as well, but you can change that. So before we start, I want to mention that I took some reference from Bracky's Line Rider replica, but we're going to be doing it with the new input system and we're going to be adding more features to it. And before I start, I just want to say thank you all for 1000 subscribers. That's amazing. I never expected to reach 1000 subscribers so quickly. So this video is kind of like a thank you. All right, but let's get started. So first of all, I'm gonna be using 2020.1.2 so I can get that dark theme. And I'm gonna be making a 2D game and you can just choose your project name. I'm choosing Line Rider and you can choose your location. And then you can click create. All right, so cool, we have our Line Rider scene and now we can go to a window package manager and let's install the new input system, which we're gonna be using. Go to packages, unity registry and search up here, input system. And so I have numerous videos on the input system, which will be in the description. So if you're interested in learning more about it, I suggest checking out those videos. What's good about the input system is that you can easily change around controls and you can adapt to different consoles very easily. And then over here, we're just gonna click yes to restart our editor. All right, now that that's done, exit out of the package manager and let's get started. So in Line Rider, we have a white background. So we wanna go to our main camera and go to background and make sure you have solid color checked and then click white. And now we're gonna actually draw the lines. So you can go to project and create a new scripts folder. Scripts. And then we can right click and create an input action right down here. So let's call this mouse controls. So this is where we will define our mouse controls, which is our position and our click. And for our action map, we can just put mouse. If you're interested in learning more about action maps, I suggest looking at my other videos, especially the introduction to the new input system video. This is kind of just like a setting it groups different actions and then our actions are our controls. So in our actions, we want to keep track of two things right now. We want to keep track of pressing down the button so we can call this click and we want to keep track of the position. So let's add a new one and click position. Those are the main two that we want to keep track of. We also want to keep track of erasing, erase, we're also going to do one for zoom and we're going to do another one for panning. Let's start with the top two. So for the click, let's expand that. So it's a button, which is good. That's what we want. And then for binding, we can click on the path, go to mouse, and then we can click the left button, which is the one you usually click with. Under position, we want to change the action type to vector two. I select pass through usually because that seems to be less buggy than value for me. For the control type, then we want to choose vector two since we're returning a position which is the position in screen coordinates of our mouse. And we're gonna be changing that to world coordinates in our scripts. So then under position, we can now choose path, mouse, and then the vector twos will show up. So then we can select position. Under erase, it's similar to click. We want that button. And under binding, we can go to mouse. And instead of left button, we can press right button. With the zoom, we only need a float. So we can just go to button and change that to pass through and change the control type to axis. And then we can go to no binding and then we have a bunch of stuff here. We can go under scroll and then let's make sure to press the Y because we're always scrolling in the Y direction. And this will give us the increment of how much we're scrolling in that moment. And then I actually made a small mistake. We don't need panning. So we can delete that because we're going to be doing that all in our script. So let's just click save asset. All right, and now we click our input action and we wanna generate a new C-sharp class and click apply. And that generates a new class that we can use in our scripts directly. And so we're gonna make an input manager so we can manage our inputs. And we're also gonna be making a line manager which will get data from the input manager and draw the lines. So let's right click and create those two scripts. So create C-sharp script and let's create one called input manager. And then right click again and let's create one called line manager. All right, now that we have those two scripts, let's open up the input manager and I'm gonna be erasing these comments. And we also don't need these system namespaces. We're only 
gonna use the Unity Engine namespace for the mono behavior. First of all, we wanna instantiate our mouse controls so we can say private mouse controls, mouse controls. And then we wanna have an awake function where we say mouse controls equals new mouse controls. We also have to be sure to enable our mouse controls. So mouse controls dot enable. And we have to make sure that E is capitalized. And we also have to have an on disable function where we disable the controls whenever our script is disabled. And finally here in the start function, we can subscribe to our input events and call certain functions. So the way we're gonna do it is we're actually gonna shoot out events from the input manager. And then in the line manager, we're gonna be subscribing to those events and those events will contain our input data. And that's because we don't wanna have the input manager be calling the line manager. We wanna have the input manager be independent of every other script and the line manager would be in charge of subscribing and getting the data from the input manager. So let's subscribe to our events. So the first one is mousecontrols.mouse.click. And then we wanna have two callbacks, one for when we started the click. So that's when we start drawing. And then when we start the click, we can do something. I'm just gonna put this empty right now. Let's just copy this four times. The next one we wanna do is when we cancel our mouse click. So this is when we lift up our mouse. The third one is instead of click, we wanna do the same thing for erase and the same for the last one, erase. But instead of started, now it's canceled. So now we're just keeping track of when we lift up from our clicking and when we press down on it. And another thing that we wanna do is lock the cursor. So we can say cursor lock state equals cursor lock mode dot confined. And this just makes sure that our cursor can't go outside of our unity screen. So it confines it to the space. So here we'll be calling our events. So we actually need to declare some events. So up here, let's make a new region, region events. And regions just help code organization because you can minimize the regions. And let's declare our events now. So we're gonna be using delegates. So we can say something like public delegate void. And then we can say the name of our delegate, which in this case, it's start draw. And delegates just delegate functionality to another script. So delegate just means entrusting that someone else will implement the functionality, which is what delegate means. So that means we want someone to subscribe to this and then they will handle all the functionality when they get that delegate event. And then we have a delegate, but we actually need the event itself, which we will be calling in our script. And for that, we can say public static and we wanna make it static so we can easily access it. Event. You don't have to make it static, but it just might be a little bit easier in this case. We have our event and then we just say our delegate name. So it's a start draw event. And then the name of this event will be called on start draw. And now let's just copy that about three more times and let's replace these. Instead of start draw here, we wanna say end draw. And here we're gonna say on end draw. The next one will be erase draw. The next one will be start erase. And then on start erase. And the last one will be end erase. And you can say on end erase. So here we're just making events for all of our actions. And then in the start function, we can call our events. So we can say if on start draw does not equal null. And we have to do this check because this checks if anything is subscribed to it. Because if nothing is subscribed to it and it calls it, then that will be a null error. So we have to make sure that something is being subscribed to this event to actually send out that event. And then we can just say on start draw and we can just call that function. And let's make sure to put a semicolon here. So we actually made a kind of inline function here very easily. And then we can say the same thing for the other ones. If on end draw does not equal null, then on end draw. If on start erase does not equal null, then we say on start erase. And finally, we can say if on end erase does not equal null, then we can call on end erase. And make sure to put that semicolon at the end. All right, that's great and all, but what about the other controls? What about the zooming? Well, we can just make a function for that and we can have the line manager call that function directly because we don't actually wanna keep track of when you start zooming. We just wanna keep 
track of that value at all times. So we can say public float and we can say get zoom. And then we can just return mouse controls dot mouse dot zoom dot read value. So we're reading its value and we're reading a float value. And lastly, we can do another helper function called get mouse position. So public vector two get mouse position. So this will return the position of a mouse. And we want to do this because in our line manager, we want to be calling this constantly and we don't want to depend on any event for this. So let's just return mouse controls dot mouse dot position. And let's read that value and it's going to be a vector two. Awesome. So that's our input manager script. All right. So while I was recording this series, I decided to actually break up the videos into separate parts because it would have been just one very long video if I didn't do that. And it might be easier to follow along if there's separate videos on the different topics. So this video was doing the input manager. And in the second video, we'll be going over actually drawing the line and making the line manager. And there'll be more videos following that, including actually implementing the player so that it can go down the slope and also panning and zooming. So thanks so much for watching and thank you so much for 1000 subscribers. I really appreciate it. And I want to give a shout out to the guy 13, who's a new patron. Thank you so much for your support. And thank you to all my patrons for your support, as well as all of my subscribers. If you're interested, the link is in the description. I offer source code as well as early access to videos and an exclusive discord chat. If you want the link to the discord, it's in the description below. You can ask any questions there or you can just chat. So thanks so much and I'll see you next time.